hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Nar Valley Way where I'm on day three which begins here at Litcham and it's going to end just the other side of Gresson Hall which is about nine miles away so it's a pretty short day really considering what I've done over the last couple of days and this building here is the Church of All Saints this is grade one listed and the tower you can see is made of brick and that dates to 1669 and the rest of the building I believe dates to about 1412 and you'd think that's the oldest building in the village but it's not just a quarter of a mile down the road is Litcham Priory and uh, that dates to the 14th century and it's grade one listed and uh, it's actually been converted into a farmhouse but on the outside you can still see some of the like monastic features there's little sort of coves and stuff where statues would have been So we're at a bit of an unusual section where the path seems to deviate away from the route you'd expect and then comes back again and the reason why is because just on the other side of this field is the source of the river Nar. There is a little pond just over there in the grounds of this great country house and I believe that is the source of the river. As it then uh, leaves the pond it goes down the hillside here and then heads south and picks up at Litcham. So, Actually, it makes perfect sense to come all the way out here because this is probably the closest I can get to the actual source of the river. But it's a bit unusual in the sense that um, on the Ordnance Survey map, it usually states like the source of the river Waveney, for example. Um, it doesn't seem to say that here, but online sources indicate that that pond is the source. So it's here that I now turn south or go southeast actually towards the village of Milam and I think I'm hoping there's going to be a place where I can get like a nice ice cream because it's really warm and there's also the remains of Milam Castle and I'll give you a bit more history on that when we get there. So where I am at the moment is inside the earthworks of Milam Castle and of course this whole area is a scheduled ancient monument and actually there's an enormous selection of earthworks here look so there's a huge bank across here now this probably marked an inner bailey so just here is the Mott. That's where the big castle, it was a stone castle, the big keep would have been built up there, probably standing at like 10 or 12 meters tall. And then an inner bailey here where there would have been a big gatehouse and probably a drawbridge across this moat. And as you can see by the foliage down there, it's still very, very boggy and that would have dropped down several meters. And then just where I've walked a moment ago is like a secondary bailey and basically anyone attacking the castle would never have managed to get through any of the outer defences and had to have come through the gates but then you're encountering lots of resistance in there. I'm going to try and make my way up to the mot now. So you'd encounter a lot of resistance in there and then you've got multiple gatehouses to get through. There'll be portcullises that come down which are big metal gates that you can still fire arrows through or attack people through but 
you're very well defended on the inside. I don't think I'm going to get stuck here. But on top of this mound is the remains, just the foundation remains of the keep itself. And it's believed this keep was constructed some point in the 12th century. So sort of late Norman, probably middle Norman. And I have found a way through. Let me get through here. And then at around 1300, this castle went out of use. And the road alongside is a pre-conquest road, which means that it's been in use since before the Norman invasion. And I think that is probably why this castle was built here. So if that was a proper thoroughfare through this area, why build the castle away from the main road, like on higher ground over there, when you can build an enormous fortress right here and still have wonderful views overlooking a vast area. So we've taken a very little detour off the trail just to come and look at the Church of St John and this is a very unusual building because the tower is completely separate almost from the nave here and I don't know why that is but this building is 14th century and grade one listed and that means it's actually built after the abandonment of the castle just down the road and actually if you go to the north side of the chancel there is a 12th century priest door which really is kind of indicating that this building replaced a much older church on the site. Now one other little historic treat that's in the graveyard here is this behind me. It's right by the entrance and it's actually the base of a medieval cross and you can see some beautiful sort of stone carvings on there. Now this has been dated to the 15th century and is protected as a grade two star listed building. So I'm round on the south side of the chancel. I've got a feeling I may have said earlier the north side of the chancel but I'm here on the south side and this is the priest door. This is 12th century. Beautiful. Now it's not your classic Norman style arch because that would be a continuous curve over so this is probably late 12th century I would say but still a beautiful example of one and some lovely stone carvings as well. So we're about halfway between the village of Milam and Gresson Hall, which is the end of the trail. And if you didn't know it, you would just walk straight past. But where I am at the moment is actually the site of the medieval village of Little Bittering. And it actually occupied all the fields just around here. Now I have seen a tiny little hint that there is a moat just in these trees over there. You can see a nice cutting into the ground. It looks still a little bit boggy, although it's not filled with water anymore. And that is more than likely the site of Little Bittering Hall. Now, there is a place called the Manor House, which is a little bit further to the northwest, but I don't believe that's the original location. I believe it'll be here. And that is purely because the church is right alongside, and it's very common to have medieval halls, and then they'll build a church as well, so the neighboring parish can use that, but also it's very close for them to go and worship as well. 
So this church just up ahead is the grade two star listed church of St. Peter, and it dates back to the medieval period. And of course, is contemporary with the village that would have been here on the site. But this building actually has some 17th century additions as well and alterations, which implies that the village was probably occupied into the 1600s. And then at some point after that became abandoned and then demolished. And here we are, the last or first way mark for the Nar Valley Way, Kings Lynn in that direction, 34 miles. It felt like a little bit longer than that. This also marks the very start or end of the Wensum Way as well, which joins to the Marriott's Way and into Norwich. And on my left is the Museum of Rural Life over there. That's Gresson Hall Museum with the entrance just slightly further up. Now, if you have liked this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, Ring the bell to keep up to date with future uploads and I will see you in the next video.